Hello. Good morning. Uh, today, basically, we've got sent in a pair of DT770s where the cable had been snapped off. And normally, the kind of mods we do uh, are pretty difficult for the home gamer. So I thought I'd try and think of the easiest way of doing a very simple detachable cable mod that anyone could do at home. You know, with a, with the minimum number of tools. I think all we really need is a soldering iron and a bit of solder and a butter knife. And I think we can do this. Uh, yeah, so, so what, what we've done is we've fitted a 3.5mm socket on there and fitted a 3.5mm jack to the broken end of the cable. And then not only is the cable fixed, but now it's detachable. So you're probably looking at a fibre in parts, an hour of your life, and no special tools required. So, uh, so let's see the ghetto, super simple, detachable cable mod for the DT770. Now then, normally uh, we just swap out the cable, but I thought it might be interesting just to do a quick and easy detachable cable mod on these. So it's not necessarily the kind of thing that we would normally do here, but this is ideal for sort of the home home gamer. You know, if you fancy doing this yourself and you're not not that skilled with electronics, this is probably the easier way of doing it. Uh, so we're going to use a 3.5mm socket, 3.5mm jack, and we're just going to replace this cable with this so that's detachable, so then we can use the rest of the cable that's left over. So what we're going to try and do is we can probably do this with just a, just a soldering iron and no special tools, I reckon. So if we just move one of the ear cups out of the way, remove the pad, um, inside there's a retaining clip which you need to lever up with something like a butter knife I'm just using the hand of a, the handle of a scalpel that pops off that pops off tapa 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 now then inside obviously you've got the wires already attached to the driver down here so I'm thinking if there's some way we can save those wires and just reuse them that would be ideal so what I think we should do is snip that off as close as you can to the edge of the ear cup so you've got the maximum amount of wire kind of left over. Hoping that will give us enough. Yeah, what I might do, um, yes, yeah, so I've just removed the clip there. I'm going to pull this through so that I can snip it right, right down here. What I'm hoping is that gives us enough wire to connect to the socket so you don't have to desolder the driver. There you go. So we've got the wires there. You've got the gold one, which is the ground. You've got the blue one, which is left, and the red one, which is right. So red for right. Makes sense. Um, gold for ground. So then we have our 3.5mm socket there. And now, if you're going to try any kind of electronics like this, I'd get a multimeter because they're super handy. So we're just going to get that in there. I'm going to set it to continuity, which is where it'll go beep when there's uh, when something's connected. And I'm going to use just the inside of this three and a half mil jack. I'm going to pop it into the socket because I'm not sure which is left and which is right on this. So what I'm going to do? Um, so on a normal jack. It goes left, right, ground. And again, I'm just gonna this this central one is connected to the tip, so that'll be the left. I'm gonna check continuity between that and the pins on the socket to check which one's left. Um, okay, so that makes sense as well. So this has got a gold and a silver one. The gold one's right, and the silver one's left. And obviously the, the other one's ground. Okay, so I've chosen this socket. Um, let me see if I can get the part number. So there's the part number from element 14. It is 126-7396. Because that's black, it will match the casing, and it looks like a pretty simple kind of socket to use. So what we're going to have to do now it's probably widen the hole ever so slightly. With this headband cable, you see you've got the driver now attached to that. You can actually pull that through a bit and give yourself a bit more space. 
so I'm going to have to widen that a bit. Now then, obviously, you can use whatever tool you want. This is quite a soft plastic. You could use a sharp knife just to skim a bit of bit of material off there. But I'm going to use a Dremel just because it's quicker and I've got one to hand. So I'm just going to find a smaller smaller bit. Oh, shush. What I'm doing is I'm taking it real slow, just slowly invigilating the hole so that we can get it just small enough, just big enough so that we can actually use the thread on there to kind of screw it in. So that's actually held in tight. Uh, as you can see, you can pull on that quite hard. Yeah, so get in the hole, make the hole just the right size. Gonna slip the nut over. Uh, do that up at the back. When you do this up, you want to make sure that the flat bit is at the top, so that the driver sits nicely. Like one of the flat sections of the nut is at the top. What I actually want to do is turn the socket round. So you see this ground one? I want that at the back, so it's not protruding up too far. Right, that's in there. Now then, now we've got to, what we're gonna do is initially tin the ends of the wires. Now then, these are gonna be lit wires, so they've got a bit of a coating on them, which needs to be melted off. So you need to get your soldering iron pretty hot. Yeah, so these have got, these are gonna need heating up quite a lot with the soldering iron to get the solders to stick nicely. If you've got a temperature controlled soldering iron, we set ours to about, about 450 for doing something like this, which will melt the, Melt the surface off. Um, solder wise, uh, I'm using silver solder. That's just because that's what we use here, but I wouldn't recommend it because it is not that easy to deal with. So just some standard solder uh, that you get from an electrical shop would be good. All right, my soldering iron's up to temperature now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the tip of the soldering iron to the wire just to heat it up a bit, and then I'm going to feed in a little bit of solder. So there's a little blob of solder and then just keep the end of the wire sort of su suspended in that blob of solder for a bit and that will melt off the the coating and it's important to do this before don't try and solder it all together in one go like tin this first because otherwise you're going to have to hold the soldering iron on there so long that it's going to melt the melt the socket so yeah get a bit of solder on here and then it will join to the the others nicely and then it can't hurt just to put a little bit on the on the contacts here as well. Uh, when you're choosing a solder, especially if you're starting out, make sure it's one with a built-in flux core, because then you won't need a separate flux. Okay, so we've got the ground wire. We're going to solder that to the long one. Get that off. I don't know whether this makes it easier or not trying to reuse the wires, but I think I think this is the safest way if you reuse the wires. So I'm just going to use the soldering iron just to join those two together. There you go. So the solder on the wire and the solder on the connector have melted together. Next, the one that was right. So we've got a gold one and a silver one. The gold one was right, so red for right. When you when you're soldering these things together, it's often easier to get a little bit a little blob of fresh solder on your soldering iron, which will help the other two bits melt. So that's connected there. Let's give it a little pull, make sure it's held on tightly. It is. The next one. Again, I'm going to get a little blob of solder. Join that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See, normally I'd use a helping hand to hold this still, but I'm trying to do this with the minimum number of tools possible. All right, there we go. So those three wires are now joined together. It's looking good so far. Okay, so I'm going to put this little little doohickey back on there. Oh, yeah. Sorry, nearly forgot. So this this little thing that goes around is part of the the sound tuning that's in these. And because we put a socket there, it's not gonna it's not gonna fit. So you'll see there's a little bridge here, and all we need to do is cut that out. And 
that'll make room for our socket that we've put in there. Put this bit back on and the, the felt will just kind of fold out the way. Okay, so now we put that over there. And what I'm hoping is is that this will all now go back together nicely. So when you when you're putting it back together, just make sure you don't break any of those wires off that you've just just put on. Um, so that's that driver in. Put the dust filter back on. Put the retaining ring back on. Making sure you line everything up with the little keyway at the top there. Everything's got a key on it. And then put your pad back on and. Uh, And we have so now you have a basic detachable cable mod um, actually I, I would recommend if you've got a hot glue gun or something just to seal up these holes from the inside because adding a little if you've got a little bit of an air gap around there it's gonna alter the tuning but only ever so slightly but if I'm being very fussy stick some hot glue just to seal up the seal up the holes or, or some other glue just glue up the, glue up the holes Right, so next we have to make the cable, which again is pretty similar to what we just did. Let's move those out of the way. Now then, most three and a half mil jacks are pretty similar uh, in design, but uh, they will have some of them. I prefer the ones with three staked on connectors, but you know it doesn't really matter. This is this is the, probably the harder style to solder, so we'll do that. Uh, so remember to put the put the back of the dr the, the thing on first, otherwise you're going to have a bad time because you can't get it on after you've soldered it. And then just find some way of holding this still. I'm going to cheat and just use these helping hands just because I'm feeling lazy today. But yeah, try and hold it down in some way so you can get to the wires. And again, we're going to tin these tin these ends first before we attach them. Wire which is blue. And again, if you've got a multimeter, if you're not sure which is left and right in ground, you can use the multimeter on continuity to check the jack the other end. Okay, so now they've all got a little bit of solder on them. I don't know if you can see those little puffs of smoke. That's the that's the coating on the on the lit wire just kind of melting away. Okay, next we want to join those on. So I'm going to start with the ground wire. Which is the gold one on this one? Actually, again, I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the on the connector. There we go. So that's the ground wire attached on. And then left is going to be the, the center pin. Join that on. And then right is going to be the other one. There you go, so that's all joined on there. Then you can slide up your, your end bit. There, this one's got a little retaining screw. But, um, some of them have got a clamp, or, or some, some. There'll be some kind of way of kind of holding it tight on the end there. So there, got a pretty quick and cheap and easy attachable cable mod. That's uh, so. That was it. Pretty straightforward. Obviously, I've gone back in. I've done it just because you know. Uh, I don't feel 100% happy with the way it was done. Uh, so yeah, I have. I've sealed up the holes with uh, hot glue. I have shrink wrapped, shrink tubed over the, the cable there with some extra glue in there just because if they've managed to break the cable before this is going to get yanked occasionally so I've just given it a little bit of uh, shrink tube over the top there which again you can buy pretty cheaply you can use a hairdryer to attach it it's uh, pretty straightforward but I suppose also because it's a detachable cable if they yank on that the cable is just going to come away rather than break. But anyway yeah that's that's it so if you're, if you're doing this at home that is probably the easiest way, especially leaving the wires attached to the driver. That means you're less likely to mess the driver up. And obviously you don't need to find extra bits of wire. So yeah, all, so we haven't used anything that wasn't already there, or we've, uh, other than the socket and the plug. 
uh, and a soldering iron. So, yeah, there you go. Hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions, stick them in the thing. Obviously, it's nice if you can like and subscribe. Uh, or just like. You know, subscribing is a bit of a commitment. I understand that. It's a bit of a commitment. But, uh, but liking, hey, if you liked it, stick a thumbs up. It makes us happy. Anyway, see you again. Have fun. Uh, it's been great hanging out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again. What, what?